Hey friends, it's Deanna here and today we're going to be sewing the paperback pants. Um, and I know we've been waiting for this pattern for a long time. Um, it's exciting. I know it could be a little bit nerve-wracking because it looks so cool once it's on and finished, but it really isn't even that hard. Um, so we can get it all done together and it'll be fun. So before I get started though, let me remind you about our fun fan giveaway, $50 Elia Maggie certificate. Um, and all you have to do is subscribe to our channel and comment, and that's how you're entered for our giveaway. Um, so if you haven't subscribed, pause right now, subscribe to our channel, and comment below, and you will be entered for our giveaway. And you could be the next winner of $50 of Ellie and Mac to buy all these awesome patterns so you can sew with me. Um, so yeah, that's exciting. But let's go ahead and get started. I already have cut up my pattern. Once again, I'm using the Ellie and Mac paper bag pattern. Um, and all my pieces have been cut out. There's an awesome little tutorial, um, a little uh, section where it tells, tells you how to uh, measure yourself and change the inseam and stuff like that, that if you need to for your height, uh, for all that stuff. So it's really, really cool so you can get the perfect, perfect fit. Um, so we're gonna get started. Um, so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our front piece, our front pant piece, and you can tell it's our front because it has that slanted side where the pocket's gonna go. And it is a little bit, the rise is shorter too. So um, that's our front piece. Then we're gonna grab our pocket liner. And you can tell it's our pocket liner because it has that shape too that's going to be uh, attaching to, you know, your regular, the other pocket outer is not, doesn't have that shape. So I'm gonna attach that. I'm gonna put it flushed with the bottom right here um, with my edge. And I'm going to pin, and then I'm going to sew this raw edge up here on the side. So this is the waist up here. This is my side where my pocket is slanted. This is my side of my pants. I'm gonna sew up here at this side. Um, I'm using my serger, but you can use your sewing machine with a stretch stitch, whatever stretch stitch works best for you. This is a heavier knit. using this beautiful ponte from Olga's Fabrics. Uh, Olga's Closet is um, the website. And um, it is um, a little bit sturdier than uh, double brush poly or anything. It has a little bit like less stretch. Well, it has good stretch, but it's, it's just a thicker, sturdier fabric. Um, so that is what I'll be using today. Um, now I'm gonna fold it over to the back and steam right here this um where my pocket it's gonna like where my front of my pocket is i'm gonna steam right here and then we're gonna go ahead and top stitch you don't want to top stitch you don't have to top stitch but it usually gives it a finished look so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna pin my pockets inside like this that way it doesn't fold over and come in when i'm trying to top stitch i'm going to do that top stitching on my cover stitch but don't worry, if you don't have a cover stitch, you can use your sewing machine. Um, that works just fine as well. Oh, my, um, my thread. That thread has a, uh, a nick at the top. Um, on the, uh, like the little what is it called? The tube, it, it's on. It has like a little nick at the top. So like sometimes my woolly nylon gets stuck on it and I have to watch it because if I don't see it, it starts getting tight and making my stitch all horrible. Anyway, so it is top stitched. You can do a, um, like a top stitching stitch on your sewing machine, a stretch stitch, double needle on your sewing machine. You don't even have to top stitch it if you don't really want to. That is up to you. So now that that's done, I'm going to bring that pocket liner back over. I'll pull it out like this and I'm gonna grab my pocket outer and place it right on top and match it at that raw outside edge. And we're going to sew them together. So we're gonna sew that raw outside edge together 
um, on the pocket. I'm gonna sew it right around that edge. So now that I did that, make sure that your pocket is nice and together. If you need to look back and see if there's any gaps, go back and fill them and close them back up because you don't want a gap on your pocket. You'll be losing your change. Don't want that. Um, we're gonna fold it over, back to the back. You can do it this way if you'd like. This is the back side, obviously, of my pants. Um, and you're gonna just fold it back over like it was, like it's supposed to be. And here we are. And just nice and straight. And then I'm going to baste it on the side where there are two going to meet. Because when I sew my pants together, I want it to be basted down so that way it'll catch that side. And I'm going to baste the top as well because when I sew my waistband, I wanted to catch up there. So I'm just going to baste it. It's just easier that way. I'm going to use some pins and just kind of pin my pocket. Um, see how my pocket is down here in the back? I want to pick, pin it down right now because I don't want it when I'm sewing my, my pants together, my front and my back. I don't want it to like flip open and get caught in the sides or anything like that. So I'm just moving it out of the way by pinning it. So I'm gonna just do a basting stitch, which a basting stitch is just the longest stitch possible in your sewing machine. It just holds the fabric together. So then when you're done sewing, you'll just remove it. It's just there to hold it together while you uh, sew two pieces together. So it really doesn't have to be a sturdy stitch. It just needs to be, it's kind of like putting a pin there that you don't have to really remove when you're sewing. You know, because usually you would remove your pins when you're sewing and your fabric might move. Well, if you do a basting stitch, then your fabric won't move. See, it's just a long straight stitch right there that keeps your fabric together and our pocket is done. So now we're gonna lay out our pant leg and this is our front. So I'm gonna grab my back pant leg. No, that's not a pant leg. Here's the pant leg. And the reason why, how you will know that it's the back one is the rises are different. You see how the front leg, the rise is shorter and the back leg, the rise is uh, higher, longer. So if you cannot have two of the same piece on this step, because you want to do the front pocket, what I just did to both of your front pieces. So you have two pockets on the sides and then um, you're going to put one front with one back and, and you'll be able to tell because there will be mirrored. So they'll match up, not match up as in like the same length, but match up as in like the side will be on the same side and the, and the rise, uh, the inseam will be on the same um, side as well. And we're going to match that raw edge of the outside seam. Remember, see this pocket right here? That's why you basted it because you're going to catch it right here when you're sewing this side. So be careful when you're sewing this side together that you pocket is getting caught in there i the weather here in south georgia it is oh, so indecisive and it messes up with my sinuses and my allergies so i'm like congested but not really i'm not sick i'm just like allergy it's annoying Okay, so on the outside, and then we're gonna do the same on the inside. Here's my rise of my front, my front pants. I am going to match that with my back pants, okay? So it obviously in the crotch area will not match, but the side, the inside seams should match where the inside of your leg goes, right here. See that? Perfect. So now I'm going to sew those two raw edges. I'm gonna sew this side and this side of my leg and then we'll have a leg constructed and then we'll move on to put it the, both legs together and our waistband. We're almost done.
All right, so my two sides are sewn up, one side, the other side. And I've done the same steps to my other leg pant. Um, now I'm gonna grab one of my leg pants and I'm gonna turn it right side out. And then I'm going to grab my other pant leg and I'm going to fit my one leg inside the other leg. So we're just fitting it right inside and we're going to match up that crotch seam. So where the pan, the inseam of the leg is going to match up that seam right there. And then we're gonna go up to one side And I'll show it to you once I put it together at the raw edge, right sides together. And it should match perfectly. There should be no need to stretch or anything. And then on the other side, going up the other side as well. And I'm gonna show you this, the inside of your pant leg. And now we're gonna sew all the way around that seam, all the way around to put those two together. All right, that seam is sewn. So when I take that pant leg out, we've got pants pretty much sewn together now we need to do our waistband, our waistband. All right, I'm gonna put my pants aside. I'm gonna grab my waistbands. I did mark my front waistband with a little pin right there. Uh, so I know which one's my front, just in case I get confused by that. Um, I'm gonna grab my waistbands. I'm gonna put them right sides together. And I'm going to sew my one side together, just one side for now. Raw edges, right sides together. My serger sometimes tries to eat all my thread and it's so annoying. Okay, now I'm gonna open it up and steam that seam down. All right, and now I'm gonna grab my interface. Oh, well, first, sorry. Moving fast, trying to get through. We're gonna fold it in half, the waistband my pan to the side so it's not in my way we're folding it in half matching the raw edges at the bottom now we're gonna give it a memory crease okay make sure you uh, your iron is set on the setting that it needs to be set on and you um, uh, don't burn your fabric that's always scary part for me. Okay, so I'm gonna open it back up. I'm gonna grab my interfacing. I'm gonna measure half an inch from the edge. And that is where I'm going to put my interfacing, half an inch from the edge. Matching all the way up to the crease that I made. And for some reason, I'm not the best at cutting their facing and always gets kind of wonky. So I'm going to trim a little bit right here because it got too long right here, too wide. I want to have that half an inch right there. And then you got a little bit wide back here too, like the two ends. All right. <laughs> found my, my scissors found the pin. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and attach it as per your usual manual, your interfacing, whatever the interfacing um, manual tells you to do. I said manual, but it's not really a manual. I guess it's just instructions. Oh, come on. All right, here we go. I'm just steaming it on. 
really what I'm doing. All right. So there is my interfacing is on. I'm steaming that again now closed. Here's my waistband, okay? I'm gonna place it now, my right sides together again. So you can tell I cut the interfacing a little long, so I'm gonna trim that when I sew it. But right sides together again at the other end, now that our interfacing is on. And we're gonna sew that together. I love these, this style pant. So cute. I loved it since the um, the kids one, the kids version came out. I'm like, I need them. So I'm so happy uh, to have them now. But yes. Okay. So now we're gonna go ahead, and the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go measure. Go measure. We're going to measure. Uh, from the bottom, oh look, it looks like there's a smiley face right there. Do you see that? The mouth and the eyes. I don't know why I see things like that. Do you see things like that? Like sometimes you're staring off into space and you start making faces like on the ceiling or you don't care. Okay, so we're going to measure um, half an inch up from the bottom of the waistband and you can mark that however you want to because we're going to top stitch all the way around leaving a two inch gap. And usually I like to leave the two inch gap in the back. That way when I sew it up, I can fix it. I'm going to do it with my sewing machine. Actually, I'm gonna change my thread to some black thread. And I'm gonna do it with my sewing machine. I'm just gonna do a stretch stitch. And we are going to do, start at a half stitch, I mean a half an inch down from the bottom. And, um. What I do to measure the half an inch and make sure it is straight, I actually have markings on my sewing machine and I measure from my, where my, uh, whatever my needle is all the way out. And I have markings at the front of my sewing machine. Like I marked it with a, um, with like a marker or something, permanent marker, or I just made a mark there where my where I have to place my fabric for it to be a half an inch so I've got like a half an inch uh three quarters of an inch and then a whole inch I just have like little marks that way I can remember for next time when I need it because you do need it often so now I'm gonna go all the way around with a straight stitch leaving a two inch gap to put our elastic through later oh no I never changed my stitch so now it's, it was just a basting stitch don't want to do a basting stitch because look at the basting stitch it just pulls right off I don't want to be able to pull my waistband right off so we're starting over I'm going to do that stitch okay so I finished that now we're gonna measure, I did my one line, so we're gonna measure from that line up an inch and a half, and that is where we're going to have to go for our next uh, line. So I'm gonna measure an inch and a half. If you don't want a permanent mark on your sewing machine, let me do it again, measure an inch and a half from the place, put my needle down, that way I know where it's at, and I just sometimes use a pencil and mark it on my sewing machine or use a piece of tape and put it right there to keep it straight. Now we're gonna go all the way around. This time you don't have to leave that two inch gap. You just go all the way around. All right. So now our waistband is pretty much put together. Trimming some of these um, threads. And then um, we're gonna work on our belt loops before we finish up our waistband. 
okay? I'm gonna grab my belt loop um, little section thing. I'm gonna turn it right sides together and I'm going to pin it. Well, you can go ahead and steam it. It sometimes it's easier to pin when it's steamed a little bit. I didn't want to steam it so much because I don't want to give it a too much of a crease. Okay, so I'm pinning right sides together. I'm gonna sew those right sides together at the raw edge to make it one long skinny like tube thing. Um, and the reason why we cut it this way is because it's easier to do one long straight thing and then and then cut it apart than to do uh, little pieces. We tried little pieces and it was So it works easier if we just cut one straight and then cut it up. Okay? So now that that's one straight tube, you turn it right side out. And you can use a safety pin for that. Where did I put my safety pin? My, my, my grandma, she's in town. And she's been cleaning my sewing room, which is great. But then now things are not where I usually put them. They are where they're supposed to be. They're in actual order. And so I'm like getting used to my room being in order for the next uh, couple of weeks that she's here. Because I love it. It's awesome. But it probably won't last. Don't tell her that though. Come on. This is really the hard, one of the hardest parts for me. I don't know why, I always have such a hard time. And you know what's the annoying thing is that I do have a tool for this, for turning this over, and I don't know where I put it. I told my grandma, my abuela, I said, can you please find it for me? She's been looking, but I can't find it. I don't know where it is. I'm sure I put it somewhere safe and then totally forgot where that safe place is. I'm like looking around trying to see if I can remember where I put it. Nope. It's been a while too since I last used it. Anyway, but it made it. It's turned right side out. Take that pin off. And now we're going to steam it and top stitch it. We're gonna do edge stitching. So I'm gonna do an edge stitch on one side and then an edge stitch on the other side. So it's like top stitch on the two sides. So if you, we're gonna go ahead and do that and then we'll cut them up into two and a half inch pieces. Uh, no, 2.75 inch pieces. So there's gonna be five of them. So let me go ahead and we're gonna go top stitch that and then we'll move on to cutting them into little pieces top stitched all the way. So now we're gonna cut them up into 2.75 inch pieces. 2.75, 2.75, ah. I think that's 2.75. Actually, I think I'm measuring wrong because my measuring stick yardstick doesn't start right at the right place i think i made those first ones a little bit short just a tiny bit quarter of an inch because it starts at 75 i don't know why so i have a little bit extra because i made them the first couple of pieces so just make sure that you don't go by the end of your ruler because it ends at 75 i don't know why Ugh. Thank you. Okay, so now we're gonna grab, we're gonna find the middle of our waistband, the front band, the front of the middle, the middle of the front, the front of the middle. I'm just gonna mark it because I'm gonna want that mark anyways later. I just kind of snip a little tiny bit and I'm gonna go from that mark, we're gonna go 2.5 to each side. Remember, don't go by that right there. One, 2.5. To one side and 
to the other side. And that's where my loops are gonna go, my front and then my two uh, loops, 2.5, yeah. And then I'm going to go, wait one second. Ooh, I just wanna make sure I tell you the right amount. Yeah, 2.5, okay. And then I'm going to do, I'm going to measure the back. So I'm gonna tell you how to measure all of them. That way you have, um, you know what to do when we loop them on. So that way we can do them. I'm gonna go to the back, find the back. Here's my back. I just match up the two side seams and I went to the back. And that's where one loop is gonna go and then there's gonna be one loop in each seam. Ooh, I got a little bit of, oh no I didn't. That was just fuzz. I thought I got blood on there, I'm like, ah. And then you're gonna do one loop on each seam, okay, side seam. So how we're gonna put the loop is like this. We're gonna put our loop right on the right below the edge of that mark so let's do the one in the middle right before that first uh seam that we made the casing off we're gonna uh go ahead and pin it and then we're going to top stitch it on right below it I'm just kind of pinning all of them even though all the three of them right here right sides together and then I'm gonna go ahead and top stitch them on. Remember that top stitch is just that long stitch. You can later remove. I guess I should not pin them that way. I should pin them the other way. That way the pin doesn't have to be removed. All right. I'm gonna show you with one loop and then I'll go do the rest of them and show you and then we'll come back and Finish it up. Okay, so it's top stitch right there. So now that that top stitch, I'm gonna fold it right over on top, and I'm gonna stitch it right on that seam that I made, that the the first seam, and then I'm going to fold that the top of the loop down um, three eighths of an inch, and I'm gonna place it right at that top seam. Let me make sure that that's the right placing right there. You're gonna, after you sew it, you're gonna press it up and you're gonna top stitch it, yeah. Okay, so we're gonna press it up. We're gonna top stitch right there. I'm just gonna put a pin again right there just to hold it down. I pretend that we already top stitch it. And then this, the top, you're gonna fold down three eighths of an inch and you're gonna top stitch again up here on the top. I'm gonna show you, pretend I already top stitched it right there at the top and at the bottom. So now you have your loop. Okay, and I'm gonna do the same to all the loops and then we'll come back, we'll put the elastic in, we attach our waistband and we're basically done. So let me go on and do that. You go ahead and do yours and we'll come right back. All right, so my loops are on and if you were wondering, yes, I am so silly. I messed up, I, I didn't mess up, but I, I was telling you, um, you go from the front and you go 2.5 inches to each side. You don't put a loop on the front, right on the front. I think, I don't know if I did or not, if I was showing you that or not, but then um, I remembered you only put, you, you measure from the middle and you go 2.5 inches to each side. So these are five inches apart. Um, and you put one right there, not at the middle. You don't have one at the middle. Okay. So. We're going to go ahead now and grab our elastic and we're gonna put our elastic through. Um, I'm gonna use my pin and we're gonna go over there where we left that two inch gap. If I can find it, where did I leave it? Where is that two inch gap? Here it is. And we're gonna fit our elastic through there and we're gonna go all the way around through our waistband, that little casing that we made for our elastic. We're gonna go all the way through there and then we'll come back to pin it. Um, this is really one of the hardest parts for me. This and turning the other things around. I don't know why I have such a hard time with this stuff. And always, without fail, I'll end up uh, sewing it together uh, crooked. I don't know why. So then I'll like sew it together. I'm like, okay, don't do it crooked, don't do it crooked. And then I sew it together and it's crooked. And then afterwards I'm like, 
taking it apart, sewing it again. Like, why? How does that happen? All right, I'm gonna finish pulling this through and then we're gonna sew it together and we're gonna attach our band and finish our, and do our uh, sash and hem and we are done. Not too hard, was it? Just a few steps, but it's not too bad. All right, I pulled it through. Now I'm gonna grab my elastic, put it right on top of each other. I'm gonna use a zigzag stitch on my sewing machine and zigzag it, stitch it together. And I just go back and forth. With my zigzag stitch. Just went back and forth. Now I'm gonna go ahead and feed it through and hopefully it is right. I think this time I did it right. Because, and there's our waistband. And now we're gonna go ahead and attach it. We're gonna grab our bottoms. And we're going to match up our uh, seams and the marks that we make for the front and the back together. So we're gonna attach the side seams Here's my, where did I mark my front? See, where's my belt loop? Here's my front, because this is my belt loop. And here's my front mark, right, I thought it was right here. I don't see it, is it on this side? Nope, that's not my front, this is my front right here. Okay, I'm gonna find the front again, because I lost it. Where's my seam? Here's my one seam. Here's my other seam. I did such a good job that I can't even tell where my seams are, wow. Yeah, this is my front right here. I can remember because I, not this side, this side. I can remember because remember I did that, I told you about the little face and I said, oh, look at the little face, it's so cute. Well, that is my front right there with my little faces right there okay oh there it is i had a mark right there okay so the mark at the front now the loops right sides together so you're gonna touch those loops to your pants don't forget that and you're matching those raw edges the front and then where those seams are one seam and the other seam And then the back seam where you, I'm not seam, the back where you found the back and you actually placed a loop right there in the back. Here it is. Oh, I forgot. Let's close up that two inch gap. Ooh, I almost left it open. All right. Two inch gap closed. I just sewed right over it. And then um, here where the back loop is, that's my back. Remember, that's where we found the back loop, right at the back. And now we're going to sew those raw edges, stretching to match up the pant to the waistband. So you're stretching the waistband. So I'm gonna start, pull the waistband, Make sure it's all even and so. Okay, next section. Again, we're gonna grab the waistband. We're gonna pull it. Make sure the waistband and the pants are even. Make sure you're gonna catch that pocket at the top where you need to catch it and so. If you need to pin that pocket down a little bit more, you can. But that basting stitch should really help. All right, next section. And 
last section. You're really just kind of stretching out that elastic, making sure everything else is out from underneath it. And your pants are done. How cute. Now all I have to do is my uh, band. All right. So we're going to put this band right side up and we're going to sew one side of it right sides together, right on top of each other, the two bands to make it one long band. Now we're going to fold right sides together and we're going to sew all the way down leaving a two inch gap to flip it over. We're going to sew down at the corner over, down at the corner over and leaving a two inch gap. That way when we're done sewing it all together we can flip it over to the right side. Obviously we don't want to leave it inside out. I'm just kind of pinning right sides together. We're definitely done with the pants. Now all you need to do to the pants is a half an inch uh, hem at the bottom of the pant leg. You just fold it in half an inch and you hem it and that's it. So waistband, I mean a uh, band and then that. All right, so let me go ahead and sew this together. We'll turn it over and we'll be done. All right, all done. I left my gap right here. I'm gonna turn this over. Now, if you want, you can top stitch this. Uh, you don't have to, it's up to you. Um, and then um, what, if you don't wanna top stitch it, then you would just catch that little piece right there, um, the hole that you left open and you would just go ahead and, oh, this is not working. You would just go ahead and, um, this is when I wish I had my tool because this is gonna take me all day, I'm telling you. Um, you would just sew that piece right sides to, like uh, close it up right here and top stitch that area that you left open. And that's all you have to do uh, to finish up your pants. You would lace obviously this through the loops, tie a little cute knot. If you don't wanna top stitch it, you don't have to. Um, then you will go ahead and um, hem your pants and you are done. So that's all I have for you today. I'm going to sit here for another hour and a half and flip this over and just steam it. Uh, make sure you pull those points out. I wish I had my, I'm trying to look for my, this guy right here. This always kind of helps me. I'll do with this guy because I want to show you what I do at the ends. If you have one of these to help you with your thread on your serger or whatever, um, I use this guy to help me pull these little sides out. Kind of helps me do it a little bit faster than just with my fingers, big fingers. I have big fingers. Um, so it's kind of difficult. So anyway, um, that's all you have to do for finishing. So yeah, you want to make sure that you're, and I'll probably, I'll shove this in here or use a pencil or use anything really, any tool I have, and pull push these corners out really nicely and steam them. And then right here at this edge, you just sew it together closed and that's it. That's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoy these. I'm gonna take a picture of them so you can see what they look like. I love them. I can't wait to wear them. Um, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please let me know if you have any questions about anything that I did that maybe didn't make sense. If you're not part of our Facebook or Instagram page, please come join us. All the info is below. Uh, we'd love to see what you're making and we want you to see what we're making over at LA Max so you can be inspired. 
I hope you have a good rest of your day and I'll see you all next time.